For those of you that are old enough to remember, back in the early 90s, when the internet was just starting to become a thing, there were really two competing protocols. You had the Gopher protocol and you had HTTP, that particular protocol. And you had websites that used different protocols. You had the, some that used the Gopher protocol, some that used HTTP, and eventually most sites started using HTTP. It kind of won out, and that really became the modern web, is the HTTP protocol. And Gopher has kind of fallen out of favor. Actually, it fell out of favor <laughs> about 25 years ago. But a lot of people still are passionate about Gopher as a web alternative. I made a video a while back about Gopher, and I even made my own Gopher site at gopher colon slash slash distro dot tube although I haven't updated that particular gopher site in a while it is still there for those that want to view it you have to view it of course in a web browser that supports the gopher protocol most web browsers these days only support HTTP they don't support the gopher protocol at all because nobody really uses it but if you use a web browser that's been around since the beginning like the terminal web browser links which is one of my favorite web browsers anyway, Lynx actually supports both Gopher and HTTP sites. Over on Mastodon, though, I got a, a really interesting toot from someone recently about, hey, DT, longtime viewer of your content, arch user, software engineer, yada, yada, yada. He, he goes on to say that he was trolling through articles and found a Wikipedia article on Gopher VR. And I pulled up the Wikipedia article here on Gopher VR. And I have actually heard of Gopher VR, you know, doing some research on Gopher in the past. It was going to be, I guess, the evolution of Gopher. It was going to be a 3D environment to view the Gopher space. They actually started working on Gopher VR in the mid-90s. According to Wikipedia here, in 1995, they started working on Gopher VR. So just, just a few short years after the Gopher protocol came into existence, they were already imagining viewing it in a 3D kind of environment. Gopher VR was primarily written by several people, but including Mark McKay-Hill, who was one of the original creators of the Gopher protocol. And viewing the Wikipedia article here, you see they even have a screenshot of what Gopher VR looks like. And, you know, I, I thought even though it's kind of incomplete technology, they never really completed Gopher VR back in the mid 90s. But people still kick it around. They kick the tires on this thing. And I wanted to see if I could get this thing installed on Linux. So I went to the Gopher VR website here. And wouldn't you know it, it basically says that any Unix-like operating system that has X11, which of course that would include Linux, can get Gopher VR installed. And I thought, well, you know what? I run an Arch-based system and the Arch guys, they tend to just throw everything in the AUR. I bet somebody packaged Gopher VR for the AUR. And wouldn't you know it, <laughs> there's a Gopher VR package in the AUR. So I went ahead and did a yay dash capital S Gopher VR. I've got this thing installed. And if you guys want to see this in action, let me switch to the desktop here and let me launch gopher vr and this is gopher vr now it launches two windows here now the first window is basically a standard gopher browser which is plain text that's all gopher really is it's very different than http and the modern web which is full of graphics and multimedia and all these whiz bang effects gopher if you typically view a gopher site it is nothing but plain text and that's what this window is but let me get this window out of the way because this is gopher vr this is the 3d representation presentation of this plain text gopher site and if I hit space on the keyboard I get a basically an overview really quick of all the links that are here and if I want to I can drag to the left I could drag to the right I could drag backwards and I could drag forwards and you find something and you double click on it like this link here that says using your web browser to explore gopher space if I double click on it then I get that opened up again in a plain text, you know, Gopher kind of client, but also here in the Gopher VR 3D client as well. If I want to go to some other side, I can click on file here and go to open location. And you do have to actually give it the full address. So I do have to include gopher colon slash slash. How about distro dot tube? 
Let's go to my gopher hole. And this is distro.tube over on gopher. And if I wanted to look around a little bit, I can see I have links to my Mastodon, my GitLab, my Patreon. And do I have just some plain gopher links? Let's see if I drag, well, let's go forward and check these out. Uh, this is some other people in gopher space that I link to. And what else do I have if I, uh, I'm going backwards and let's go forwards. I have links to the Gopher project, PyGopherD, that is the uh, Gopher server that I use for my website. And let's go forward this direction. I have my video archive over on Gopher. Let's double click that. And then I have this page, which only has three links, my videos from 2017, 2018, 2019. Again, it hasn't been updated in a while. That's why there's no 2020 and even 2019. I think I quit updating early in 2019, the Gopher site, because I created my own website at distrotube.com. And I need to find some way to automate the process. So when I upload to my website, it actually updates the Gopher site as well. Uh, I need to investigate that, but I haven't had the, the time or the, uh, the inclination to do that just yet. So I, if I click on 2017, you know, this is all the videos I made in 2017 that I have links to. So if I clicked on one, and then in the Gopher client, I actually get the proper Gopher page. You see 2017, and then it's a list of every video with all the URLs. And if I clicked on a URL, it would actually download it to my local machine here. One of the cool things is you actually have bookmarks. You have uh, Navigate. Uh, there is a preferences option somewhere in here because I clicked on it earlier, but it hasn't been implemented yet. So basically this is still beta software. It's beta software probably that no one's ever going to complete because <laughs> it was started development, you know, in 1995, that was 25 years ago. And I don't think anybody really has any plans to really finish Gopher VR at this point because the Gopher protocol kind of died a quick and fast death in the, the mid to late 90s. Although here in recent years, a lot of people, including myself, have really started touting Gopher again because of how slow and bloated the modern web has become. The fact that Gopher is essentially just plain text. It's so much faster. That's why people like me have created their own Gopher sites and, and why I promote it and other people are starting to promote it. More and more people are actually starting to rediscover the old Gopher protocol. So it's pretty cool technology. Uh, again, it's, it's not much to it. All you can do is just get this strange 3d representation of a gopher site and click on things uh, if you click quit of course it quits out of everything it quits the 3d representation and the uh, the plain text window as well before I go, I want to thank a few special people. I want to thank the producers of the show. These guys, they're my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon. I'm talking about Michael, Gabe, Haplo, Nate, Corbinian, Mitchell, Arch5530, Chris, Chuck, DJ, Donnie, Dylan, George, Omri, Paul, Sean, Tobias, and Willie. Without these guys, this episode about Gopher VR wouldn't have been possible. The show is also brought to you by each and every one of these ladies and gentlemen. All these names that you see on the screen right now, this is all my supporters over on Patreon because this channel is supported by you guys, the community. If you'd like to support my work? Consider doing so. You'll find me over on Patreon. All right, guys. Peace.